Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be playing with some newly released products from Pink Fresh Studio and I am using the Happy Bloom Floral. I'm using the stamp set, the coordinating die, as well as the coordinating stencil. I love having sets like this that work easily together because it makes crafting super fun and super quick. I also pulled out my color palette. I'm going to use Sweet Mustard grassy knolls apricot for my lighter shades my darker shades is olive persimmon and um, marigold a nice fall color palette all right let's go ahead and get started so i went ahead and i placed my image into or my cardstock rather into my misty and now i'm going to bring in my image now the image is kind of large so it is going to take up like a standard size card front which is four and a quarter by five and a half but it does allow you just enough of wiggle room that you're going to be able to die cut this out so for my paper today i'm just using nina solar white and this is 80 pound cardstock and this image is so beautiful I love that the stamps um, come together. So you're not trying to have to stamp two separate items. They come together in on the stamp itself. So you're going to get multiple images that you can die cut out at once. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and I'll go ahead and press that down. I am gonna bring in my little glider tool here just to make sure I get a good impression. Now, of course, this is a new stamp. I forgot to season it. So I'm going to stamp this twice because I do wanna have a nice crisp black line. Once I stamp that down, I do wanna make sure that I heat set this. And that's only because I stamped it twice and I am going to be layering some um, ink on this and I don't want that black to smear. So sometimes if you don't allow the ink to dry fully on its own, you might get a little bit of smearing when you go to stencil over it and I'm trying to eliminate that today. Now there are I believe four stencils with this. And again, I love these layering stencils. It really makes coloring an image super, super quick. And also you can create um, gradients. Now you can also do this if you just want to color it in with your regular Copic markers or even water coloring. This would be gorgeous for water coloring. I did want to bring in my sticky mat so I can place down my cardstock kind of in the middle and then allow me to have some of that extra room to place down my stencil. Once I have my stencil in place, I'm just going to push that into the mat. Again, the mat is sticky, so it's going to hold my stencil in place. And I'm gonna come in and start coloring in using the lighter shades first with a blending brush. Again, using these kind of stencils, it makes it super easy to color. I love coloring, I love water coloring, I love using color pencils, and I also use uh, my Copic markers, my Altenew alcohol markers, but sometimes it could be a little bit intimidating for some people who don't like to color, or if you don't have the time to color, and you just wanna do something quickly, you wanna make sure that you have it colored right. So using these kinds of stencils, these layering stencils, it makes it perfectly easy for you to color in something and while you're at it, sometimes make multiple cards. If you're gonna have all of this out anyway, go ahead and make multiple cards. Now I'm gonna come in with stencil number two. Again, just lining that up. They're super easy to line up. Once I get that in, in place, I can go ahead and press that into that sticky mat again. The sticky mat is holding my stencil in place. And then I'm going to come in with my lighter colors once again. So again, I'm sticking to a very simple color palette and I love using what I consider more fall like colors, even though I'm in summertime mode, because in nature, we're gonna see all these colors anyway. So pick your color palette of what really, uh, grab what you gravitate towards and just stick with it. So that was stencil number two. Now I'm coming in with stencil number three, again, using that grid mat is perfect for holding my stencil in place now if you don't have one of these grid mats you can totally uh tape your cardstock down to your glass mat and then just use micro pore tape or mint tape 
or even a thermal white purple tape to just hold down your stencil in place. You can also use pixie spray. Now I would use pixie spray if I was doing this for multiple cards, then I know I'm already going to have that uh, light tack behind my stencil. But because I was only making one card for the video today, I chose just to use my sticky mat. So I came in the, with that grassy knolls and you can see how easy I'm building up my color palette. In my last video, I talked about color palettes. Make sure to swing over to my Pinterest board, um, MZ Dana Joy. I have a ton of color palettes. Um, I have a board called Color Combinations, and you can find a ton of color combinations that I go to when I'm kind of lost and I just don't know what colors I want to use together on a card. That board really, really helps me out. And I'll make sure to link it in the description box below. So I'm just coming in, I'm adding in some of those deeper tones now and make sure to wipe away any excess color you might have so it just does not bleed into your next color. Once I have that down, I can start going in with some of those darker tones because this is stencil number three. So stencil number three is going to really start giving me that build up of color. I'll go ahead and clean off this stencil and remove it and you can start seeing how the colors are starting to really build up here. I'll go ahead and lay down my last um, stencil, but I'm switching to a smaller brush. These are all to new detailing brushes and this allows me to really get into the nooks and crannies without having to worry about going into another color combination that I just don't want my colors to like bleed or turn brown. So using a smaller detail brush is really going to help you to achieve that look without interfering with any of the colors that might be around you. Next, I'm going to come in with that persimmon and I'm darkening up those edges. Again, having that contrast is really going to make your card pop. Now look how gorgeous that is. I'm able to build that color up, but remember, I'm just using the stencil. Now you could do this and if you wanted to, after you finish with the stencil, you can add in some uh, pencil work. I know Kathy Rukusen is fabulous for adding in depth with pencils. So you can also do that. I just want to show you how easy it was just using the stencil and a more detailed brush. Now you see I'm pouncing off that color on my stencil just so I don't get like too much of a strength on it. And then I can grab that ink. I'm not gonna let it go to waste. I can grab that ink and then pull it back into a stencil. So look how gorgeous this is building up. Again, super, super easy when you're using the stencils. Now I'll come back in and I'm going in reverse now of my stencils. I'm going all the way back up to one again. Using that detail brush, I'm coming in pulling some of that color that I have on the stencil, pulling it in with that baby brush. Next, I can go in with my darker green. Again, just adding that color, tapping it off first on the stencil. And this is a great way not to have like too much strength or too much contrast right away. If you just wanna build up that color, this is a great way to do it is by dabbing off the color first on the stencil and then you can pull in that color. So as you can see, I'm dabbing off first and then I can pull in that color. If I go straight towards it without dabbing it off, I'm going to have um, a deeper contrast. Now, if that's something that you're going for, have at it, pull the color directly from. Now you see sometimes I'm dabbing directly on to the ink pad and bringing that color in. That's because I want it to be full strength. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up and look at the dimension that we have. Again, super, super easy to do if you wanted to just sit back and relax and do this with Copic markers. But again, the stencils are magical for this. I'll clean off that stencil, making sure I don't have any of that residue left over, and then I can bring in that color. Now the color palettes that you can choose from are really endless with this. And um, I have the full collection of Pink Fresh Studio inks. So you can do this in pinks and purples. You can actually do it in shades of blue. I think that would be phenomenal if you did a monochromatic in shades of blue. 
I chose again to go to a warmer, more fall-like color palette. It's just really hot here in Florida. And Lord knows, I would like some fall weather. So I'll go ahead and clean that off and then add in the rest of those details. Again, using that smaller brush allows me to bring in that color, but I'm not going over the original light color that I had. I'm just adding in that contrast. So again, place the ink first on to your stencil, and then you're able to go ahead and pull that color in where you want it. Now, since we have that done, I can go ahead and remove this stencil and you'll see how gorgeous this image is. Oh my God, I absolutely love this color palette. And I love how easy that was to create just using the stencil. Now, since I have this done, we're gonna go ahead and die cut this out. Now using the coordinating stencils, I mean coordinating die with this, is going to allow me to cut out both of the flowers at one time. Another thing I love about these Pink Fresh Studios matching stamps, coordinating dies, and stencils is that you can stamp two flowers at one time and then you can also die cut the two flowers at one time. They're linked together, so it makes it super easy to die cut a bunch of flowers at one time instead of having to line each one up separately. Now you could go ahead and um, stamp this out multiple times, color them again with the stencil multiple times, die cut them all out and then you will end up having a lot of flowers left over for extra cards that you might want to make in the future that you just don't have time to do today so once i have that in place i just put some low tack tape on that and ran it through my die cut machine and look how gorgeous these flowers are again if you're a little bit too nervous to color something like this using those coordinating dies is perfect now I did want to add a background to this. So I love this new stencil. This stencil is called Slimline Diamond Builder, but I'm going to show you how you can use your Slimline stencils just on a regular A2 card panel. So first I'm gonna lay down a stencil and then I'm gonna kind of arrange my flowers. I'm trying to see exactly where I want them. I do know I want to have a little bit of a space in order to put in a sentiment, but this is a good way to find your placement of your card or get in your head where you might want your design to be and making sure that you still have room to add in a sentiment. Now I'm going to stencil this, but I want to stencil this really, really light. I don't want anything to really compete with my flowers. So I'm going to bring in a stamp set. I'm going to see where I want my sentiment to be. And now kind of in my head, I kind of have a rough kind of plan of where I'm going to place everything on my card. I'll use a little bit of a low tech tape here or adhesive here, and I'm gonna line this up on my grid mat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that stencil. Now the stencil is going to be shorter on the sides but longer on the top compared to if I did a slimline card. But I'm gonna show you how you can kind of trim that down and not worry about that excess white part that's on the side. I grabbed my purple tape and I'm using my glass mat here and I'm just going to tack this right down to my glass mat. And now I want a very light color. So I'm going to use this Misty Coast. And this is like a very light gray. I don't want the, the design to compete with my flowers. So I'm just going to lightly sponge some of this color on here. Now it's going to be super light, but it is going to give me a little bit of a color difference. So the back of my card panel has a little bit of interest, but it's not overwhelming. Once I have that sponged on, I do kind of like take a peek, make sure I have enough color on there. And now I'm gonna tilt this up because it, like I said, this color is very light. So can you see that? I have just a little bit of a hint of color. 
Now I am going to trim this panel down to get rid of those white sides. Remember I said with the slimline stencil, you're going to have those white little borders. Now you could leave those white borders because it really does look pretty with just having the white border. But I knew I wanted to have a background color to this card. So I went ahead and I trimmed that down. Again, I'm playing with the placement of where I want my images to be. Now, this is so pretty that I don't want to lose a lot of the flowers by the overlapping of the images. So in order to kind of save some of those flowers, I'm going to trim out some of these pieces. I want to trim them out so I can kind of use some of the flowers that might be tucked away and then I can place them somewhere else on the card. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm going to just cut out some of the leaves and I can add those to other spots on the card. So remember, if you have a large bouquet like this and a lot of it might be covered up, just make sure to trim out some of the pieces. And then you can use those pieces as fillers to fill in spaces on the top of your card when you're done. So again, I'm just lining everything up, seeing what might overlap and then trimming down those pieces so I can place them elsewhere on my card. Now, if I put this on a slimline card, I probably wouldn't have to worry about that because I would have more linear space. Once I have those trimmed down, now I can kind of like interlock my flowers. Just trimming down that, those pieces allows me to interlock my pieces together. And then remember, those filler pieces that I die cut, I can just tuck those in towards the top of my card now. So I'm not losing any of the flowers that we created. I'm just repurposing them in a different layout on my card. So that's a great way to salvage some of those pieces that you might not want to lose and rearranging them in another design on your card. Just keep that in mind. Anytime you're making a card and you're like, oh, I just don't want to get rid of that pretty flower, trim it out and then tuck it back in so you're not losing the color. Now I kind of have what I want my layout to look like and I want to keep those pieces that I just tucked together, actually together. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab some purple tape and then I can pick this up as one piece. So now this just looks like one really large thing of flowers where it's actually two different pieces or two different parts of flowers that now I've kind of like placed so it looks like just one really big bouquet. I do want to add some dimension to this. So I am going to grab some 3M foam tape. You can do this with the little squares if you don't have it on a roll like I do. Just give this card a little bit of dimension when you're making it and I promise you, you'll be glad that you did. Now I can go ahead and peel off all of the backing and then place this down onto my card panel. Again, if I was doing a slimline card, I can probably have multiple bouquets on this, um, on a larger card panel. If I had made and stencil, remember you already have your stencils out. You already have your die cut out. You already have your stamp set out. Go ahead and make multiple ones. So you have extra images to use on cards later. I'm gonna go ahead and place that down towards the bottom of my card. Cause remember I did the layout beforehand. So I know where my stencil or not my stencil, excuse me, my sentiment's gonna go. Now, once I place that down, I can go ahead and remove that purple tape. And now the single bouquet now looks like a larger bouquet. And I'll go ahead and add in some of those elements. Remember we trimmed down those elements from the bottom and the sides of the bouquet in the beginning. And now I can tuck those pieces in. It's going to give me a little bit more height on this floral piece. And remember, I didn't have to color anything else. These were already colored. I'm just using the scraps that I cut out and adding them back in as filler pieces. This really can change the, the way a card looks and how it works if you have images that might go beyond the border of your card panel. Just make sure to tuck those pieces in and then you have a different floral arrangement. 
So I'll go ahead and tack that in along the bottom. And now I wanna go ahead and place in my sentiment. But look how gorgeous this card is. Now I went ahead and I already stamped out my sentiment. And I know that I don't want this to be white on white. I want there to be a color around this. Now I don't have paper that's going to match these colors. So make your own paper. I went ahead and grabbed the persimmon, which is the darker of the oranges, and I'm just putting some of the ink around the corners using my craft mat to just swipe up some of that color. And this is going to give you a perfect color combination seamlessly across the card panel because I'm just using the ink to make my own quote colored cardstock. This is a perfect way to make sure that everything matches on your card panel. I don't have to fill in the center of this panel because nobody's going to see it. It's going to be covered up by the panel that we already have our flowers on. So just remember, if you have inks, you can make your own paper. I'm doing this directly on Nina Soda White 80 pound. I don't use my thicker cardstock for this, but I do want to make sure that when I place down this panel, I have the color all the way around. So now it's time we can build up the card. So I'm going to use Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock for my card base. That's usually the card base that I normally go gravitate towards. And yes, I'm, unless I'm using like my Hero Arts paper. Now I'm going to use my Mini Misty here to get this card panel lined up. And then I can press that into place. And now remember that panel that we already stamped and colored on and we have those beautiful flowers on was trimmed down about a quarter of an inch. And now that allows the orange that we just blended to really frame out that beautiful piece. So I'll go ahead and press that down. Now, at first I thought I wanted the flowers to kind of hang over and then I changed my mind. So I am just going to grab a larger pair of scissors and just trim those pieces down. I'll still have a little bit of pop of that orange at, towards the bottom, but I didn't want it to hang off of the card panel. Now I thought I would add some Nouveau drops because I have these drops and I have a tendency not to use them. I'm really trying to use things that are in my craft space. So I thought I would bring in a nice color green and that yellow matches perfectly with the yellow that's on the card. This is another way to remember to pull out some of those craft supplies that we kind of set aside and totally forget to use. I knew that these colors were going to match. So I picked my entire color combination, making sure that the Nouveau drops I was going to add in was also going to match. So just remember, when you're starting to make your card, think ahead of everything you wanna to add to your card so you get a cohesive color palette. All right, so I placed just a few of those on there and I'm just making sure to kind of fill in closer to those flowers where I might have just some extra white space. And there we have it, you guys. The card is complete. All the products are linked below. And thank you guys for watching and I will see you back in another video soon. Take care, everybody, and have a great day.